I'm Jeff Zarnett, and this is Software Career Growth. Today we're going to talk about one of the hardest things you have to do as a manager, and that's giving somebody bad news. topic is about giving somebody bad news and as a manager it is going to happen you are going to have to tell somebody something that they don't want to hear and there are no great answers to this right like here's some things that I will suggest uh, here's my suggestions but at the end of the day it's not fun and no one is happy to receive bad news right if they were it wouldn't be bad news it would be good news so Although it would be good to have all my suggestions, if you think they're useful, please remember that, well, you can't um, necessarily leave the situation where everyone leaves from that conversation feeling like, wow, that was an amazing conversation. I'm really glad we had it. Okay, so there are five things that I think you really should not do uh, in this situation. So number one is no ominous message. No sending them a message on Slack or Teams or what have you saying, we need to talk without any further details. That kind of thing will obviously make the person feel very nervous. It will make them worry. It will make them think about what could it possibly about. Uh, and you don't want that, right? The anticipation is sometimes worse than the actual thing that you're planning to tell them. Sometimes it's not. If you're telling them that they're being let go or laid off or... Uh, something like that uh, obviously then the anticipation might not be worse than that but a lot of the times the feedback that you want to give to them really isn't that big of a thing and letting the person sit with that you know anticipate it worry about it is just stressing them out and it's bothering them so don't do that if you do need to give the feedback to somebody make it clear you know, try to have that feedback as quickly as possible and so in uh, in a way where they're not left worrying about what it's going to be before that conversation actually happens. That leads us to the second point, which is have the conversation sooner rather than later. Don't procrastinate having this conversation. It sucks to have this conversation. You aren't going to enjoy it. The other person is probably not going to enjoy it. But building it up in your own mind doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. The longer you put off having the conversation, the harder it is going to be to have that conversation and the worse you're going to dread it, thus increasing the chance that you want to procrastinate it some more. So I would say have that conversation sooner rather than later. It doesn't build up quite as much in your mind that way, but also whatever bad news you want to give is probably you know, timely in that regard. If you're telling somebody that you know, their work was unsuccessful in uh, winning a bid or completing a project or something, telling them sooner means they can take action on it sooner, means that we could do something about it, could improve. It's not helpful to give somebody bad news weeks or months or whatever after the fact because you feel uncomfortable giving them the bad news. It's just not fair. Ideally, if you've been following some of my other suggestions, you have these regular one-on-ones with people in your team, if it is in fact someone in your team who's uh, getting the bad news, in which case this is a good opportunity to talk to them about it. So it's a regularly scheduled event. You can add it to the agenda if you need. Uh, being mindful of item one, you know, try not to make it you know, as big anticipating like I have bad news to give you um, kind, of, uh, kind of agenda item. But whatever you do, don't procrastinate it because telling people sooner is better. Third suggestion, don't make it impersonal. If you are giving somebody this bad news, um, can be really bad news, can be that you know, somebody is being let go because the company is restructuring, uh, layoff, um, reassigned to a different team, something like that. Don't make it impersonal. It does feel easier to send it as an email. It does feel easier to send it as a Slack message or you know, some other form uh, where you don't have to be face to face with the person. But I really don't like that and I really don't think that's fair. Recently, in time of recording, it's early 2023, there have been a lot of layoffs in tech companies and frequently those layoffs have been done where somebody just wakes up and their credentials have been deactivated. You can't log into your laptop, key card no longer works, that sort of thing. And that's how you find out that you are laid off. That's really impersonal, and I really do not like that. Um, when you are uh, Google size and laying off tens of thousands of people, it may be very difficult for everybody to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation right away, uh, but I don't think that's a good way to do it. Uh, and when you're giving bad news to somebody, it's the right thing to do 
to actually be there and look the person in the eye virtually or otherwise and tell them the thing because that's the human thing to do. That's what, you, that's what will be remembered, that's what will be appreciated by somebody. It's just, it's just inhuman, you know, impersonal to you know, let somebody know bad news by email. Uh, whereas if you've been working with this person and uh, wh whether it's bad news about a project or about their continued employment with you, I think you owe them having a personal conversation where that bad news is delivered. Fourth item, no compliment sandwich. Some of the advice that's given about how to give bad news you know, suggests this idea of what is referred to sometimes as the compliment sandwich, which is you start off with, you know, here's a good thing, here's something I really liked about you know, the project that you did, uh, and then the news that you actually want to deliver, the bad news is in the middle there, and then after that you finish off with a compliment so that you know, you're ending on a good note, that sort of thing. I don't really like this methodology. Uh, maybe it's effective uh, for some people. Maybe some people like receiving feedback in that regard. But I think most people kind of see through it. I think most people who are you know, working professionals understand that like the thing in the middle is the thing that this was really about. And the stuff that's on the other side is just like, uh, we had to come up with something to produce this compliment sandwich kind of structure. So I would say don't do it. Um, with that said, uh, you may know that it's particularly effective or ineffective for somebody with whom you work, uh, in which case, go ahead, you know, do, do the thing. Uh, I suspect it's also probably different when giving feedback to you know, children as opposed to giving it to professional adults. But as a manager, if you want to give somebody the feedback, just give it to them. That, that doesn't mean you know, negative feedback and positive feedback can never be paired together. You want to give an honest assessment of things and say, here's what I think went well and here's what I think went badly but you don't have to sandwich it so the negative stuff is in the middle. That's a little bit silly. And I think you know, as adults, we should be able to handle it separately where it's okay, here's what went well, here's what went badly. You choose which of those go first, um, but no reason why it has to be you know, packaged up in this spe very specific way to make it more palatable. Uh, and the next thing when you have to give negative feedback is try not to make it a blaming exercise. You should have done this, you should have done that, why didn't you this, why didn't you that, is not a great way for feedback to be delivered in a way that the other person is going to hear and take seriously. Especially in a workplace setting, right? the goal is that we're all trying to accomplish a goal together. We want to build a great product, we want to you know, improve a technical architecture, we want to do something together. And we should think of it as a team effort. And if we're giving bad news to somebody, we are telling them their performance isn't you know, up to the standard. Just telling them you should have this, you should have that comes across as blaming. It's not constructive. Right? Um, giving people valuable feedback should have happened along the way, obviously, as, as you get there. But in the end, if that wasn't sufficient, then it didn't work and you're giving them bad news now. But framing it in a, in a sense where the person feels blamed or they feel defensive doesn't mean that they're going to take that feedback and do something with it. It probably means they're going to feel defensive. They're going to argue. They're going to say, well, they don't understand. They don't know. They don't this, they don't that, uh, and come up with reasons why that feedback is not correct or not applicable or just reasons why they don't have to change. And a lot of the literature around this suggests that framing this as sort of you and me versus the problem is more effective than an idea of you know, here's what I want you to do uh, and or here's what you did wrong or any similar kind of construction. So with all those things on the negative side, what could I say uh, that you know, things you should do? Well, one thing is to be clear with the person about what improvement looks like. So if you're not happy with the work that the person has been turning in and you've been giving them feedback where you say, listen, I, I don't like the um, pull requests that you've been creating because they're too big and they contain too many bugs and you don't write enough tests and what have you, that's not a great way to frame it. But when you are explaining that you know, the pull request would be better, it would get approved faster, it would this if it has uh, more tests and is more thorough, you want to say a specific goal for the person to understand what your expectations are. And so if you say, all right, I want pull requests to be merged with fewer comments in the future, 
uh, and uh, avoiding someone commenting, please add tests for this functionality. That's clear, that's understandable, that's achievable. And as someone who's receiving the feedback, they can understand, are they meeting your expectations or not? Right? If they are creating a pull request and it's still getting comments that say, oh, you forgot to add tests for this scenario or there was insufficient testing in this PR, they know they're not there yet. Whereas if their next PRs uh, when created have lots of tests and have uh, you know, no comments uh, regarding missing tests, then they know in fact that they're doing what they're supposed to do and that they're meeting your expectations. Right? So making it clear what improvement looks like is gonna be very beneficial. That of course suggests that they will continue to be employed with you if you know, the bad news that you're giving them is in fact that they're being let go. Uh, as a result of uh, layoffs, restructuring, or, or just overall poor performance, then that's uh, there's no future expectations in that regard to talk about. But even for someone who is struggling, right, uh, a goal for helping someone to get back to performing at their level makes sense. You have a performance improvement plan, and the performance improvement plan should have some very specific ideas about what does it look like for the person to be succeeding in their performance improvement plans. Performance improvement plans are difficult. They're a whole subject all their own, so that would be a topic of another video. But when you are giving the bad news, I just want you to keep in mind that if you're looking for improvement from the person, then you need to be very clear about what that improvement looks like and make it measurable. They're not gonna be able to achieve that goal if they can't assess how they're doing, if they don't understand what you're looking for. So that's what I have to say on the subject of giving bad news and how to make it as constructive as possible and make it as likely as possible that it's gonna be well received by the person that you're giving it to. But the final thing that I wanna close on is, yes, uh, it sucks to give somebody bad news. They might not like it. Uh, it might be a very uncomfortable, it might be a difficult conversation, and that's okay. You should expect that, uh, and you should not be afraid of having that conversation just because it might be difficult. Uh, and you should also you know, talk to someone yourself, you know, talk to your manager or talk to someone in your team who's in a similar position uh, because it's uncomfortable for you and you should get support in this situation as well. So that's it for today's video. Thanks. Don't forget to like and subscribe.